Okay, that's fine. Yeah, thank you very much for having me here today. As mentioned before, our talk is one hacker is good, two hackers are better, bug hunting as a team. And we really want to dive in in our challenges and also the advantages of hunting as a team. And so let's get started. First of all, a little bit about the agenda. You uh, yeah, might heard something about internetwache.org. We will tell something about our story, how we teamed up what have been our challenges and what you can learn about it. And we also have some few ideas about the future for researchers and also for bug bounty hunting platforms. So yeah, I hope it's uh, really interesting for you to hear our story. First of all, Sebastian unfortunately did not make it today to this talk because he's on another hacker conference in Germany. So yeah, that's also an advantage as a team that one person, for example, can give this talk here and another person is on a security conference and can learn a lot of stuff. But I'm pretty sure that uh, he will also answer your questions later or might also be there on social media. Uh, as I mentioned, it's Sebastian Neef. He's a master student at the university here in Berlin and he is doing freelancing and is a hacker. He also is in the CTF team, Inoflag, which is playing uh, yeah, CTF as mentioned before, and it's really fun for him. And he's also a co-author of a cybersecurity book and uh, yeah, loves to see new research and getting into yeah, fancy security stuff. And on the right side, you can see me. My name is Tim Philipp Schäfers. I'm uh, working as a IT security consultant at a company which is mainly focusing on yeah, information security. And I'm also of two German InfoSec books. One is about IEEE 802.11, so wireless security of uh, wireless networks. And another one is about uh, web application hacking. It's called Hacking in Web. It's a German book about uh, web application security. So. First of all, I want to tell you a story how we got started into bug hunting because prior to 2012, we have been individuals and yeah, when we did responsible disclosure, I by myself have not even heard about the term bug bounty program. So at this time I was just kind of a A-level student uh, going to school and found some fancy bugs on some websites, reported it, and then there was always a bit discussion about a finding and uh, telling the companies what we are doing, why we are doing this. And yeah, we both have different skill sets and areas of focus. And also we are still, or we have been learning at these days. So we improved later. That was really the early days of our project. So responsible disclosure was hard at that time. There was no central bug bounty platform yet. So there have been uh, bug bounty programs like Facebook or Google, but not that many companies into that business. Also some administrators ignored our emails or even if we call them by phone, there was one very big German car manufacturer. He even told us that he has no idea who is responsible for a certain subdomain. So that was really frustrating because we really saw a problem there. For example, that you had access to customer data and they were not even caring about this. So sometimes we just went to some journalists to get kind of a pressure for this uh, certain problem. And yeah, then we thought about a project and did a few responsible disclosure programs. At this time, there have been a few and some companies already had this slash security page. At that time, Backcrowd also had a very fancy website where they really presented what companies really care about your bug reports and that really helped us at the beginning. So our first responsible disclosure program where we really participated in was from eBay. And we thought about it and think Meraki was the first bug bounty program at that time where we participated and get paid for a bug. So in 2012, we have been very active and also in the recent years, last years, we are still doing responsible disclosure and ethical hacking. And yeah, so let's move on. 
a few words about the early days. That's uh, really important to me because um, yeah, everybody starts somewhere and it's really an important thing that you don't get frustrated by the success of others. So you might see those uh, people on Twitter or even they're writing a blog post, how successful they are. And yeah, you should not get frustrated by that because everybody starts somewhere and it's uh, always good to focus on your own research and topics and share your successes. So if you have achieved something, some other person on the internet or on this planet might be interesting in that. So yeah, that's really important, I would say. And of course, you are also not alone. Look for people with the same interest, participate in a project or attend a conference. There are so many conferences out there where you really can meet great people and uh, you can really learn stuff out there. So that's really important. Keep learning, read books or reports from other people, also blog posts, but don't get frustrated. As mentioned before, it's uh, yeah, just an idea to get to improve your own skills, to just see that. And also another tip, um, also watch Life Overflow Secrets step-by-step -step guide to learn hacking. Um, this is a kind of a funny video because there is no secret guide, but it really helps you to yeah, get a kind of a focus how you can improve your skills and yeah, get an idea about this. So everybody starts somewhere. It's uh, yeah, really good to look at different resources and yeah, just keep on working on that. Then how we teamed up, um, we really faced the same problems. As mentioned before, we started as individuals reporting uh, bugs to companies and there really was a problem, for example, to describe those people why we are doing this. So not everybody is familiar to white hat hacking projects or even bug bounty programs or responsible disclosure. Even some big companies, uh, for example, in Germany, did not know what that was. And yeah, that's really kind of a problem. So we came up and thought about it. Hmm, we have a vision. Why aren't we putting our idea, so what we are doing, on a website? And we also both had the passion for InfoSec. So we really moved on and thought, hmm, might be a good idea if we yeah, really push that project forward. Another very important thing is that both of us had uh, the willing to share and learn from each other. Uh, Sebastian, for example, is very good in scripting and also writing certain exploits, even more than just web application things. So I really learned a lot from him. That's uh, very nice. And I think also he learned a few things from me. So yeah, sharing is caring, I would say. So you can just improve your skills and learn from each other. That's really great. Then you can also learn certain uh, tricks, tips, methodology, or even tools. So by tools, we mean tools which are out there and you did not know. And then the other person is saying, wow, you, we can use this tool to, I don't know, find out uh, DNS records of a certain domain. And that's really helping you because you have, for example, an endpoint and you just need more information about it. So that's really great. You also have uh, a partner to discuss findings or problems. For example, if you want to bypass something that can be really helpful to yeah, just talk to somebody about this and not sitting in a basement and uh, trying out how to yeah, bypass a certain filter or something like that. So that yeah, can also be very helpful. And of course, uh, one area is also that uh, you can establish a friendship. For example, Sebastian and I, we really love to do things together, not even hacking, but also hacking and hacking things together is even more fun. Because if you combine, for example, certain exploits, you really get uh, deep into some things, uh, deeper as you would expect at the beginning. And that's really only happening, I would say, at this point, if you put all your skills together and yeah, really working on yeah, one point to, for example, achieve a certain exploit or find a certain bug on a website, that's really great. But there are also some very important questions because not everybody is like, yeah, I love to team up or things like that. So you should, answer the following questions for yourself before you are teaming up. 
what do you want to do as a team? So is there a certain vision? What's your real goal you want to achieve with this teaming up? Whom do you trust? Do you really trust your teammate or only uh, yeah, regarding, regarding certain points or you want to really share everything with the teammates? What's a perfect team size? It's also a point where we kind of yeah, get confronted with because there were other people who were interested in our project. And at some point we were four people at internetwache.org, for example, and uh, did some kind of research. But yeah, it's not always a good idea to have a big team. So yeah, we kind of split up at some point. So the other teammates still are doing great things. We're in exchange with them. But not everybody, that's also where we come uh, later on, has the same amount of time or yeah, even skills. So that's really something where you should uh, also think about before you are doing something like that. Then do you share the same values or ideas? You don't have to share the same values and ideas, but it can be really helpful if you have the same vision or goal or even idea. And about the values, it's very interesting. Sometimes it even helps if you are more diverse. So if there are different opinions on something, then a real discussion is happening regarding the project, also regarding vulnerabilities. So that can be really helpful. And do we have fun together? That's also a very important question. Is this just yeah working on a certain project or you really like to uh, yeah, have fun together, for example? Uh, as Internetwache, we uh, have been on several trips in other countries and yeah, even hacked there. So that was very funny for us. And you really yeah, have to know each other very good to do something like that. Are you willing to share your knowledge? That's also a very good question um, because sometimes you might have tricks um, which are yeah, kind of top secret. And are you willing to share them with the other teammates? Um, you should think about this. Otherwise, uh, there might be conflicts within the group. For example, if you report certain bugs or don't share your way of exploiting things. So yeah, you should talk about that before. So that are just some example questions. There might be even more, but for us, uh, those seem to be the most important ones. Then a little bit about our project. Uh, the funny thing is that Internetwache is German for Internet Guard. And um, when we started in 2012, we don't even had a focus on English people. So mainly we started as a German blog. And later when we yeah, get our A-levels, for example, and we went to certain conferences, we learned that most of the people are not uh, able to speak out internetwache.org because the ch in english yeah really sounds uh, funny so mainly it's kind of a brand today everybody is reading reading internetwache but uh, yeah sometimes you know those nicknames are not so easy to speak today we would uh, stick to another name which is more yeah international like internet guards but i think there are also um, yeah, other projects out there with a nearly familiar names. So we are really happy to have internetwache.org as a German name in the bug bounty community. As I mentioned before, we kind of started as a blog or website and um, we started as a kind of FAQ. So let admins and people know who we are and why we are reporting security issues. That really sounds uh, yeah, easy, but as I mentioned before, if you write an email and you need most of the email just to explain why you are reporting this, then you really think, okay, it's better to have a website for that and just um, in the email just place the technical details so they can view at your website if they're really interested in this uh, project. So that's what the first idea of internetwache.org really was. We also had some write-ups and interesting findings. For example, also some blog posts from Sebastian about certain CDF challenges. And yeah, it's really a nice place for us to publish conducted research. And we also have a Twitter handle at Internetwache. So if you are interested in research or what we are doing, you might uh, follow us. And yeah, we also like to retweet other very interesting research. So yeah, 
make sure you do this. On the right side, you can see the kind of first page we implemented on intentfache.org. There was really why we're doing this, the problem, the idea, and what's responsible disclosure to make sure that everybody out there understands it. And today it really sounds funny, but in 2012 for us in Germany, it was really a yeah, big step forward to explain this to the people out there. So as I mentioned before, internetwache.org was not even about bug bounty programs at the beginning because we know uh, we did not know about bug bounty um, programs at the beginning. We just found crazy big websites or e-commerce shops with certain vulnerabilities and thought, wow, this uh, yeah should not happen. We have to call the administrator or give them some information about this. And then we get know about, uh, for example, bug crowds. At the beginning, that was really a kind of, uh, yeah, just one website where you could report vulnerabilities via Google Forms. So uh, really a minimum viable product at the beginning, but for us, a dream came true because we could do what we love and even get paid for that. That was really great. And so we started hunting on various platforms and bug bounty programs because, uh, yeah, we had a lot of time back then and thought, this is one thing how we can improve the security of the internet. And that was also one main goal of internetwache.org. So you, you can see a few things we did. We uh, have been in 2014, for example, in the bug crowd top 10 long time ago. Here you can see an old screenshot. We had a very fancy bug in paypal.com. We had their past traversal. And we also did some research about Git repositories and the .ds store files within the Alexa top 1 million. And as mentioned before, today for us, bug hunting is not only a bug, about bug bounty programs, but also ethical hacking. And what that means to us, you can uh, see later. For example, we uh, also hunt bugs uh, within websites which are not even uh, part of a big company, but are very important for the society or improve uh, the internet security by yeah, conducting to open source projects and so on. That's also part of hacking. And here's some uh, example. At the end of the last year, we were able to find some water purification plants in Germany. So seven, and we even were able to uh, spot some vulnerabilities within the software. And as you might know, industrial control systems, yeah, are not that uh, state-of-the-art security uh, focused projects. So we really uh, were happy to help at this point because you can imagine what might happen if some yeah, bad guys out there might find some vulnerabilities within the software and even yeah, for example, put down the plants there that would uh, not be very nice. So yeah, we're really happy to have this ethical hacking standpoint nowadays. Um, we also had media and press coverage and even a hearing within the European Parliament. And there have been several films, interviews and uh, other articles, for example, about hacking and hackers. For us, it's always uh, yeah nice thing to present us as a team, but also the hacking community in general. I think this is also because we are kind of yeah doing a, or having a website where we explain what we do. If you are an individual, then you might not be able to yeah be this kind of. Uh, yeah, kind of professional so that uh, the media thinks you really have to kind of say something. It really sounds uh, strange, but yeah, it's kind of the feeling we have. So it can also help you if you team up, for example, that you have yeah a more professional website or even media comes to you and say, hey, it's really interesting what you are doing as a team or together. And that's also a thing where different people can bring in their expertise for example, technical people or people who are more interested in public relations and things like that. So we really yeah, look at our task and see who is doing what, or how we can improve uh, our project and work. And of course, we have also been to some conferences, for example, at Bug Crowds, uh, last conferences, or we did a talk at Code Talks, which is a 
kind of big um, conference here in Germany. So we were really happy to yeah, give there some general ideas and even explain the people what bug bounty programs are. So that's also kind of a task we yeah, mainly stick to, to just share our knowledge in order to improve the security, for example, of e-commerce shops here in Germany. Then um, I want to explain how we deal with uh, bug hunting and what kind of tools we are using or used in the past. So first of all, we had this uh, bug hunting sessions. That could be a night or yeah, just a day where we just sit down and say, okay, we have to find a bug in this bug bounty program or in this certain application. And for us, it's always, yeah, kind of learning things and have fun, hack stuff, and not just focusing on the uh, bug bounty. So it's, yeah, for us, a positive side effect. But as we are not doing this on full time, we are yeah, happy to find certain bugs and happy to also improve the security. So as you can see that uh, we, we did the several hours long sessions, for example, in the evening, and at the beginning of Intent Wache, we seemingly uh, choose random targets at the beginning, um, just big websites to see if we are able to find a vulnerability there. And I can tell you most of the times where we had this kind of bug hunting sessions, we were able to spot one vulnerability in a website and even some critical ones in very big websites here in Germany. For us, it's always a motivation and you can discuss at laws and also do a loud thinking. For example, if you find out what kind of technology they are using, how the different uh, components of the architecture are working together, it's uh, really nice to hear yeah, different opinions about that. So you can really discuss how you might get uh, a bug in this kind of applications. And we also have this kind of research topics, as I mentioned before, and for those, we might even have several such hunting sessions. So we say, okay, let's uh, look, for example, two weeks, how many days uh, can we make free and what's our target? For example, we did this for this industrial um, control systems. Um, we looked at a certain software, which is very widespread here in Europe. And we were really able to find even these plans which were accessible from the internet. So that was really something where we put a lot of effort and work into. And at the end, we were very successful, reported this to the German third, so computer emergency response team, and they reported it to the companies and they fixed it within the software and even within the critical infrastructure itself. Why is this bug hunting sessions uh, are very important? On the one hand, you can have different tasks and one person is, for example, doing some recon and the other person is doing in-depth analysis. This can be really helpful and for us, for us it's a very efficient way to yeah, focus on one target and get most of the information out of it. And yeah, that's, that's really great for us. Then it's also kind of a quality assurance because Double checking findings is always pretty nice. Sometimes you don't see all of the things or you might even have not looked uh, deep into things. So the other person might even find more things. So that's really great. Also good to do a proofreading of the reports uh, in order to get most of the points or kudos so that you are really sure that the triage team is understanding this bug and not that there are just uh, three lines of code and everybody is asking so what's happening there. That's really good um, to improve the quality of the reports. And uh, we also love to create fancy proof of concept, for example, some videos or even a script who is, uh, which is doing something. So that's also more fun together and uh, you can also say, okay, I will do a proof of concept of that. You can go on and do, for example, recon, stuff like that. So sharing of task is yeah, really an advantage of teaming. How we communicate it, we used uh, certain tools, for example, Skype at the beginning, then we stick to TeamSpeak and Java. So you see in online meetings, it's uh, there are various ways, but uh, 
yeah, most of the tools are more or less equal. So that's not one point where we should say, okay, you really have to use this tool. Um, yeah, just choose one and be happy with it. Of course, we also have offline meetings when we talked about our strategy, for example, what do we want to do as internetmarket.org and uh, where do we put some focus in? And yeah, just sit somewhere, drink, chat. Uh, you can also uh, join some conferences and her um, re new research topic you might uh, yeah, look into as a team. So another very important thing for us was that we have tools, for example, Etherpad for real-time exchange of endpoints, ideas, outputs, and even write-ups. So we were able to write blog posts together, things like that. We hosted this on a own server, and we also had an own pastebin service, even in hosting script for images um, and shared email inboxes. So that's kind uh, of very important things that you really can share and work together on things. The Etherpad is still working for us and is really important for us to yeah, just have, for example, one pad for one bug bounty program we are participating in or one research. So everybody finds information in one document and can add certain things if they would like to. And yeah, of course, uh, shared email inboxes are also very important. I come to this in a moment because communication is very important. We have to know who tested what endpoint and how what was not tested and if there have been any strange behavior. That's uh, very important. So documenting everything, communication really is the key at this point. You also have to know what was not reported. Um, for example, if you want to chain a certain uh, exploit series, then you might be interested in yeah, not reporting a bug, but uh, working on a even better proof of concept. And also, you should exchange about currently scans, which you are doing, and for or future targets. Did you get a reward for vulnerabilities? And you should um, check this out and say, okay, we really uh, reported this and it's uh, finished for us. And do we need answer questions, provide any details, and who can do this? So it's also an advantage if one person, for example, is very busy, with his master thesis or bachelor thesis, then it's really great that you know, okay, another person is dealing about this. So uh, yeah, that's worked out really well for us. Then how we managed our findings. Um, that's also very interesting because at the beginning, we really had an own forum, which was hosted and we had one thread per report we did. And we had different categories, for example, for responsible disclosure and bug party programs. And we had even different phases, for example, reported, answered, and fixed, and uh, also text for vulnerability types. So if we found an cross-site scripting vulnerability, we looked that up in our forum. And if we find, uh, for example, the same content management system on a different endpoint, we can really look that up. So we have, uh, yeah, kind of a forum where everything is collected at one point, not, not just randomly uh, sharing some screenshots, but also really have everything in, uh, at one point. That was really great at that time. The coordination uh, was also done via the forum at some point. And for us, it was always very important to not answer twice, but keep everyone updated out there. And nowadays, those tasks are mainly done by bug bounty uh, platforms. At the beginning, um, that was really hard because you reported something. Sometimes you were not even able to look in the bug report. And this really improved a lot. I mean, there are also very fancy write-ups out there. We also have a linked list for ourselves. And I think it's also accessible from the internet where we uh, shared very interesting research. So today our forum is not uh, is no longer in use. So yeah, we shifted that to, for example, the Etherpad and things like that. Then how we managed our rewards and costs. Um, some people say when it comes to money, the friendship ends or something like that. But for us, it was not really a big problem because most of the times you can say, okay, 50% there, 50% there. 
or something else, for example, uh, based on work, who found the endpoints. Very often it's really uh, not uh, hard to exploit, for example, a cross-site scripting vulnerability, but finding such an endpoint on a subdomain, for example, and there it might, yeah, even the endpoint who found the endpoint and he might get the reward, or if you have a fancy bypass or exploit, that's also something where we say, okay, you really did most of the work here, so you also get the money. Of course, we also had costs for tooling, domain servers, and so on. For example, our website must be hosted on a, uh, yeah, on a web space, so that's uh, something where we had kind of a shared money. Um, if we have a splitting bounty, for example, we decided to keep that in our internwache.org project and reinvest it, for example, in our tools or the platform. Um, it also is very hard to decide, for example, who is going into a hall of fame. Um, most of the times we tried to get both people within this hall of fames um, as Team Internetwache. Most of the cases that also worked. If it really was work of one person, of course, then only one person is also getting this, so that's fine. Um, we also kind of had a problem with swag at some point because there was only one shipping address, so that's uh, something which might be get uh, improved in the future. But uh, for example, you can ship this to one person and share that later, that's also fine for us. So yeah. Then we come to personal challenges because uh, that's also something where you really have to deal with. For example, if you have different views or different opinions, sometimes it might be really hard, but sometimes it also helps you to write your view. So um, yeah, it's always interesting to hear another opinion or to think uh, out of the box with the different mindsets. That's, uh, yeah, for me, um, very important to have a certain views on one topic. And of course, there might even be a different time management. Some people are getting up late in the night and uh, then doing the work. Other people might do this in the morning. And there might even be misunderstandings. But the most important things about all these personal challenges is that you talk about it. So in general, if you team up, you really should say, OK, I really have a problem if we are doing this and that. And then you as a team have to look, okay, how can we deal with it? Who is doing what and why? And uh, is it really helpful to do this as a team or do we do this as individuals, for example? That's um, yeah, something you should always consider when you report a certain bug or doing certain research. Do we want to do this research together or is everybody doing this on their own? What's the advantage and disadvantage? So there have also been challenges with uh, bug bounty programs or bug bounty platforms. Um, at first, for us, uh, mostly it's not intended for teams. Um, that's that's our point of view because most of the platforms, uh, yeah, kind of have this idea. There's one researcher out there who is doing some research and reporting certain bugs. It's not like, uh, for example, on GitHub where different people working on one project and checking in code and uh, it's uh, kind of different um, so there might be improvement in the future then uh, we also had some problems regarding two-factor authentication it always depends what kind of two-factor authentication is in use but for example uh, if you use LMS or email or TOTP, um, yeah, you really have to know, okay, which device has which uh, secret key and can we share it? For example, with SMS tokens, it's kind of hard. There might be a service for that. Uh, if you know this, let me know in the comments. I would be really interested in that. And of course, another problem might be ID verification. So who is really behind this account? Can we as a team have one account or how do we share uh, certain findings, things like that, uh, non-disclosure agreements? So are you allowed to look in a certain program as a teammate and how to make sure that uh, everybody sticks to this NDA if just one person uh, accepted it? So that's kind of a gray field and 
in the public um, programs, we yeah really stick to this uh, NDAs and of course also regarding the private uh, NDA uh, programs. But it's yeah sometimes kind of hard to do this kind of account sharing in general. And then also tools for teams. With that, I mean um, that, for example, some platforms could provide uh, etherpads or even a collaboration uh, feature. So that would be really nice if we might see this in the future. Otherwise, most of the teams have to create their own infrastructure for doing this. And it could be really helpful if people, uh, people from the same region or country really could uh, yeah, get together into one bug bounty program and just share certain uh, findings or even tools together. What changes we love to see in the future? For example, more teams. Uh, as far as I know, there are not that many teams out there. Sometimes you see people on Twitter who are really sharing their knowledge. For example, Team Sweden um, with uh, Franz Rosen and uh, Matthias Carlson, I think. Uh, so that's really great that there are people who are working as a team. Uh, we love to see this. And we also would like to love better teams. So who are really focusing mostly uh, dealing with bug bounty programs as a team and not as an individual. And also this kind of team functionalities on bug bounty platforms, as mentioned before, like on GitHub organizations or something like that and even more support for researchers like tooling um, or certain domains, um, uh, yeah, reservations for researchers or teams. That would be uh, very nice from our point of view. So in general, what we have learned from the past, teaming up has really helped us a lot and uh, get us where we are today, has given us a lot of opportunities, taught us a lot, and it has given us advantages over individual bug bounty hunting or hunters. Sometimes it's tough, for example, designing on bounty splits, deciding who's in the Hall of Fame, who gets CVEs, interviews, and investing an equal amount of time also can be very challenging depending on uh, who is doing what. So yeah, that's also something you should consider. And sometimes you also have this kind of communication overhead. For example, you wrote an email and then you have to write your teammate that you wrote an email or he has to look it up within the email box or within a certain chat. But uh, yeah, that's fine for us and we are really happy to be there as a team. So yeah, we are still there. We are happy about the future, about the path and we are still good friends. So yeah, teaming up really is great. I also hope that this talk might be an inspiration for people teaming up and getting even better reports out there. So reporting those on various platforms or to the bug bounty platforms. And if you look, for example, at the professional field of IT security, you also see that there are a lot of teams. Um, very often there are not individuals who really put work forward, but uh, yeah, different people with different mindsets. And that's also I think where the bug bounty community might head into. So that would be really great from our point of view. So in general, that was our talk. I hope you enjoyed it. We are happy to answer your question. I uh, also have the YouTube chat here. So if you have a question how we deal, um, yeah, just answer, uh, just, uh, just uh, ask it, I will answer it. And uh, I will be also on the bug crowd Discord channel after this talk so if you have questions you can contact us via email twitter or find us on the internet so yeah thank you very much and with this i would hand over to sam and yeah. maybe there are also some questions from the community out there um great job great job thank you so much for that talk that was awesome yeah um, everyone you. in the chat um throw in your questions or um or any sort of comments? Let's see. I know I saw a question earlier um, earlier in the talk that someone was asking, you know, how should I, how do I meet people? Mm -hmm. And obviously it might be different for your personal situation, but I, I was wondering if you had any sort of general advice on how to meet people that would be good to team up with. Yeah. Um, that's also a question where a lot of young people who are, yeah, for example, in 
are in my lectures. So I'm giving uh, talks at university, for example, and a lot of people sh uh, say, okay, how can I yeah, get really get into this community? And um, yeah, so it's really hard or not so easy to answer question because it really depends on the individual. But in general, there are a lot of conferences, for example, out there. And yeah, just go to some conference or look for certain projects online, talk to those people that can be really helpful. And if there's a hacker space, for example, um, in a city next to you or even a uh, club for hackers, that's also some point where I think most of the people can really get uh, into yeah, finding teammates and uh, making friendship with other hackers. That's really a very important thing. I think it's also good for yeah, kind of the yeah, mental health that you have some people to exchange because this kind of bug bounty uh, hunting sometimes uh, yeah, can be really hard so that you are just uh, sitting at your desk and look for vulnerabilities within web applications. So this social component and exchange with others is really important. I totally say. agree. That's great advice. Um, let's see here. We had, well, we had... Um, the, let's see. We had a couple of typical questions around like what hacking tools you use, but I want to see if we also mm. have anything about collaboration or t uh, teaming. Let's see. Yeah, I, I thought uh, that there was one person who asked about this Faraday uh, kind of thing from Infobytes. That's oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. On GitHub, I think. Uh, I did not know this before. So, yeah, we might look at that. But, yeah, at this point, no, we did not know that. But uh, there are also other tools who are more integrating this kind of collaboration things. So yeah, it's really interesting to see that there are some tools who now also adapt this kind of collaboration features because even yeah, most of the pen testing companies have this kind of problem so that there are not individual researchers, but they have to do, for example, an assessment as a team. So it's really interesting to see how this uh, products or tools improve. Nice. Um, we had a question in the YouTube chat from uh, Samuel, mm -hmm. which a uh, nice name. Uh, <laughs> they asked, uh, "Can uh, can complete noobs be any useful in hacking collaboration?" So, yeah, if you're a more experienced person, would you? Uh, get used from someone that's newer and how would that newer person maybe try to provide some value? Yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, everybody starts somewhere and this idea to say, okay, you are a complete noob is yeah, kind of very hard, but uh, I think it's important to integrate uh, those people or also yeah, tell them things or share your research because um, otherwise they might not get to this next level and the question regarding can they uh, be useful uh, it's always a question for whom i think it's important for the security community to have new people within this field because uh, there are a lot of threats out there so yeah you call them noobs uh, there might be the next security professionals in the future so it's really important also to talk to those people and give them an idea share for example yeah youtube channels or tutorials with them and yeah if they are qualified in yeah some way or can help you with some task why not so yeah that's something i would say integrate those people it's important to us to yeah have those Great, great, great. All right, let's see um, what else has come in here. Um, <laughs> this is an interesting question from Muhammad Kaiser. Um, he asked, um, while you're collaborating, um, what is the information that you shouldn't share with your te with your teammate? What we shouldn't share. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so mainly at Internwache, we really share uh, most of the details. But of course, for example, Sebastian and I are also doing penetration tests as uh, private individuals or freelancers. So if you have an NDA there, that's really uh, something where you are not able to share informations. 
Um, but if you say, for example, to a person who uh, came to you and say, please do this vulnerability test and you say, okay, uh, I will do this with a teammate and we also have an NDA and things like that, then this might be okay. But yeah, you really should uh, stick to the rules there. And yeah, for me in the past, everything I shared and I think Sebastian would say the same uh, was fine. But yeah, of course you should think about this. If you have your super duper exploit, <laughs> then yeah, it's sometimes hard to uh, decide whether you share it or not. But uh, in general, for example, our research about .ds store files um, really was a great thing. And we also shared this with the community. So that's good for everybody. And I would also love to see other people sharing their ideas. Um, there was just a good question that came in. Um, so earlier we talked about like how to meet people, but, um, how do you think that you can accomplish or, or sorry, how do you think you can create that, that trust between those two people that you're going to need because you are splitting, you know, you're splitting money, not only that, but everything else that you're splitting work and all this other stuff. So yeah, how do you, what do you suggest to kind of build trust between someone that you might be just meeting online? Yeah. Um, the funny thing is Sebastian and I also uh, met on conferences and online. And at the beginning, for example, you don't have a very big trust. So trust really needs time. And I would also not say, okay, just team up and tomorrow you are the biggest or greatest team and share everything together. You really should uh, be careful. For example, also met these people in person. Will you talk a lot? Have you the same vision, the same ideas? And then you can decide step by step what you want to do and what to achieve, not only for bug bounty hunting, but in general. So that's really yeah important, I would say, that you have a step by step trust level, I would call it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's see. Well, I mean, we did get those questions earlier. About, oh, sorry, Jason. No worries. Can, I just had a question. So I've, mm -hmm. I've played in a lot of CTFs, and um, it, yeah. when I play in CTFs, it feels very similar to how I want to collaborate on on Bug Bounty. Would you suggest that people play a couple CTFs the team to get the feel of, of kind of how that works with sharing information with other people? Yeah, of course. Playing CTF really is a great thing. Um, to learn more about each other, how you focus on challenges and how you really can work together to improve your yourself and also um, yeah the team. So that's really great. We also, for example, uh, collaborated in CTFs and had even an own CTF for the community. Uh, I think it's uh, three years ago or something like that, but that was also very great. So yeah, playing CTFs or even doing some yeah labs and uh, stuff like that or implementing a project a website together um, that's yeah really nice to learn each other or learn from each other yeah very cool you don't have to focus on uh, hacking at the beginning but just yeah doing things together and hack stuff uh, yeah have fun together that's really great i would say yeah, and the stakes are, I mean, obviously there's like the winning of the CTF or whatever, that's on the line, but the stakes are a lot lower than, I guess, hacking for money when you have to kind of deal with all that drama. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I guess what I was going to say earlier is um, we could indulge some people earlier. Um, we're asking about the hacking tools that you guys use. Um, you, you went through a lot of the collaboration tools, um, and you have given um, many technical talks. So I do encourage um, our listeners or our viewers to uh, Google you guys and um, find a lot of stuff that you've done with Bug Crowd, but also elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah... Um, I guess while we have we have a, a handful of minutes, um, you could talk about if there's any like particular uh, tools that you guys like. Uh, yeah, of course, Burp is uh, our general uh, yeah hacking tool for web applications at least, and we are also having our own tools. So that's also a very interesting uh, thing. If you are working as a team. You can really share your Python scripts. Um, we have an own repository 
where we check in tools. Also the Git tool you can find on our uh, GitHub site was an internal tool at the beginning. And then we really decided to put it out there because it's really a contribution to the community. Um, the same we also did with the DS uh, parser, which is out there. So yeah, of course, um, our own tools and also, yeah, like the standard tools, uh, you also saw yesterday on this uh, channel on the level up uh, conference, uh, certain tools. So there is no super duper top secret tool. And uh, sometimes I also think the question about tools, yeah, really is also hard, but sometimes it's not about the tools. It's more how you, yeah, get onto a pro. Uh, exactly. Problem, yeah, totally agree. I think, um, I think as beginners, um, in anything, um, but especially hacking, you're always kind of searching for this thing. That's kind of gonna give you that leg up, you know, finally kind of unlock things. Yeah. And, um, it's not always the tools, it's the methodology or, you know, the steps that you go through. Um, yeah. On that note, actually, um, when you guys start hacking on a, on a um, target, mm -hmm. how long do you spend on a, on a bug type? Uh, someone was asking in chat, um, it was a NI project, I think is their name. They're asking, like, for instance, if you were looking for eye doors, how long would you look for an eye door before moving on? Also, very hard to answer this directly. Yeah. Um, it really depends on the functionality of the website. If you think there could be something, then it's really a good thing to stick at some uh, yeah, kind of vulnerability, for example, an eye door then you can decide doing this uh, for kind of one hour. And if you say, okay, we don't find anything today, that's also fine. Then you can put this into your backlog. For example, we are doing this with our Etherpad. If we have uh, some endpoint, which is a bit fishy to us, then uh, we focus on that. And if we are not able to find anything that gets into our backlog. So yeah, in general to answer the time uh, is, is really hard, but yeah. Focusing on things is also very important. And if you know, for example, that your teammate or teammates is really good on one topic, for example, um, bypassing some filters or something like that, then you really should mark this for your teammates. So this can always be helpful if you stick uh, or uh, yeah, stack at some point, then another person might help you with that. Yeah, um, Haddix just left a good comment in chat. I mean, he's on here, so he can elaborate if he wants to. But um, he's he's making a good point, and and this kind of points to um, Jason's other presentations about a hacking methodology, where it's not necessarily uh, w with how he hacks. It's not necessarily looking for idors and just like going all over the place looking for idors. He's looking more through all the targets, all of the different endpoints that you come across, and you're looking for stuff that's interesting, potential opportunities, and then you look for the bugs that are, you know, potentially available to you in that in those opportunities, right? So if you find a login page, for example, that's going to be different from another page that might have other different types of functionality. Yeah, in general, as uh, Jason mentioned, if you find something interesting, uh, always stick to this because uh, if there is an uh, unnormal behavior, then uh, it might be a vulnerability or even might be something the owner of a program might be interested in. But of course, you really have to yeah, read the rules and know what they are interested in and then document all the things. We also had some cases where we really had something in our backlog and then we looked it up again and then we found a vulnerability in there. So it's always helpful to really not just uh, yeah, have one or 20 tabs open in your browser, but also writing down and documenting what you are doing and why you're doing this, especially if you work as a team, because if you yeah, work together, the other persons might not know what you have tested there and it's really important to share this so everybody is uh, able to spot vulnerabilities very efficiently so yeah i do uh, i do a little bit of testing with um with some students of mine who uh, are in my bug hunting classes and um mm -hmm. one thing i i would 
I would caution people is uh, I tend to want to like hoard the like uh, exploit or, or bug like location or endpoint or something like that until like I'm I'm pretty much out of options, <laughs> uh, which is actually not useful. So I've found that working with you know my students, the earlier I inform them that something is interesting, um, even if I think I'll be able to exploit it on my own, if I've accepted the fact that we're gonna work in a team anyway, and mm -hmm. probably over the session of our you know, or like the, the long term of our agreement and the, you know, the, how we're going to work together. I pretty much know in my head that the money is going to get equalized between both of us anyway. So the saving the time is actually what I care about. And so um, earlier talking to your partner or your, or your students or whoever um, is, uh, is actually better in the long run to mm -hmm. save that time. And whoever gets it first, it doesn't really matter because you're going to, you know, you're going to exploit it between the two or three of you anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So really, really chatting together, for example, and not just writing is also a thing. For example, in our hunting sessions, it's really important that you talk to each other and also think out loud. So if you are at a certain endpoint and you tell your teammate what you're doing, that's yeah, really great. And this exchange really is important. So yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I will be on the Discord later. So if you have questions left. Awesome. Thanks, awesome. Tim.